All right, hey guys, welcome to SAR Trail. This is Dan from Rough Country Products, and he is the first Colorado Sherp dealership, kind of West Coast, first Western US yeah. Sherp dealer, just the only one, distributor. And from what we know, this is the first Sherp to touch base in Colorado. And he's gonna show us around it, because this thing is super cool. If you've seen the videos, you know they're amazing. If you haven't seen one in person, you gotta check one out at some point, because it really kind of shows you not only the capability you can see what they do off-road or on water, but just you kind of get a feel for it, how rugged this thing is built. And he's gonna show us some of the features, some of the products, and uh, so Dan, take over for it a little bit. So what you might have seen on some of the videos is that it's a skid steer type steering. It's a clutch brake, so pull back a little bit, it's a clutch, pull back tighter, it's a brake, and it'll just pivot right on the tires. So it can turn very sharp or it can turn wide depending on how you, you're steering it. Um, also, this particular unit has two heaters. There's a heater right here underneath the calf of the driver, and then there's another Webasto heater, which uh, will run off of the diesel fuel, um, independent of the engine, and that's uh, great. You just set the temperature and just let it keep you warm. And the Webasto runs right off the main tank, right? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And I've let this run for a couple days, and I didn't notice any drop at all in the gas gauge at all. And so it's very, very fuel efficient. So, Dan, have you driven one of these off-road? I've driven this very unit uh, for about 50 hours off-road. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so have you driven like Jeeps or other 4x4s, things like yes, that? Yes, I spent a lot of time with different off-road vehicles and, and whatnot. So what's what's like the biggest difference that you notice between a regular 4x4 SUV, something you would take off-road? So the, the way you drive these is very different. With a Jeep or side-by-side -side or something like that, if you're driving down a trail, you see big rocks or a big mud puddle, you generally try to avoid them. With a shirt, you're a big boy toy, so you got to <laughs> aim for that rock. You got to aim for those puddles. It's just that much fun. Nice, nice. And so, uh, yeah, it'll it'll crawl over, you know, rocks that are, you know, foot foot and a half. Sure. And you might not even know it if the passengers are not paying attention. It just glides right over. It's super smooth. Wow. Okay, so we talked a minute ago about when you drop down into water. Yeah. So let's say you're going to drop down into some. You know, yeah. So you, you, you drop into. off drop off the shore mm -hmm. into water. Uh, you'll want to close this, of course. Right. And then, if it's going to be you know deeper water, then you want to close this as well, so you don't get a big splash, a big wave of right. water coming into the cabin. Sweet. And then, if you haven't seen them, the paddle tires, and you can talk more about it, but it, it floats. If you haven't seen the shirt before, they float. So yeah. it doesn't matter how deep the water is; it's irrelevant. Yeah, they're fully amphibious, so typically you'll have to register as both an ATV and a boat. Okay. And uh, which is you get a lot of really cool looks when you just drive right off the boat ramp, keep on going. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I bet. Everybody whips out their phone; they got to report it. They're like, "Oh, it's a shark!" Yeah, that's yeah. what that is. I saw videos. Uh, it's like a Russian. But uh, you drive out in the middle of the lake. You know, kids like to use the top as a diving platform, oh, and you know, just have fun with it. So you can walk on the top. You can walk on the top. Uh, okay. Sit up there, climb around. Yeah. So, and you were telling me also about the roll cage. I don't know if the, the last one we saw one in person at one of the expos, I don't know if it had the roll cage on. I don't know, I don't know if that's standard. So but the, the ROPS is not standard. Okay. It is an add-on. Um, and so you can, you know, it costs, uh, I think, a couple thousand. I don't remember the price right off. But uh, on, the, on this Shirt Pro, it goes the full length on the Shirt Pickup. It stops right behind the passenger. Oh, okay, we haven't seen the pickup version. I'm guessing it has an open. Yeah. Cover so, area. so basically, the pickup has a wall right behind the passenger. Okay. And then everything behind that is a pickup. Okay. But it does have a shell that you can slide on and off. Oh, nice. Okay. So one thing I didn't know, whenever we go around the back, but it sleeps six people. It'll sleep up to four. Four. Right. It'll okay, four see people. six in the back. So eight total. So you can carry a total of eight people when you're driving. And you can sleep four. Yes. That's crazy. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Can show us this cool thing over here, Dan. This is something I didn't know also. So Dan was explaining to me what happens with these hubs, what they can actually do, the hubs on all four of the wheels. Yeah, so the, the hubs here are auxiliary fuel tanks. So you can put your diesel fuel in there and it'll hold 15.3 gallons of diesel fuel. Uh, some people actually use those for drinking water, obviously before they put the diesel fuel in there. Right, right. And so uh, you don't want to get them mixed up once you start using them for water and fuel, right? 
that uh, with all four tanks plus the main tank, you'll have over 75 gallons of fuel, which on paper will give you a pretty good range. Uh, several thousand miles. A couple thousand miles range. And if you're going on a trip longer than that, you can probably find a gas station. Yeah, yeah. So, and how tall are these? I mean, these are... So those are five foot tires. They're just shy of uh, full five feet. Uh, they run a maximum of three PSI. And a maximum of three PSI. And they'll go down, depending on your terrain, you can control the pressure from inside the cabin while you're driving. So you have a compressor on board. Not everything. a compressor. It runs off of the exhaust. Really? Yeah. yeah. It runs off the exhaust, and so you can control. You know, you just channel the exhaust into the tires really? and inflate them or deflate them. Yeah. So, does the exhaust last longer, shorter than regular air you pump in from a compressor? It, it, it's airtight, so it, it'll last the same. But uh, it makes it easier because now you're not having to weigh. Uh, Add the additional weight of a compressor. Right. No, right. that's so it's I've just never heard added of lightweight. So and then this, it looks like these are they're all beadlock. They're all beadlock yeah. on here. Yeah, and we can get if you're going to be doing a lot of rock crawling, these are aluminum beadlocks. But if you're going to be doing a lot of rock crawling, you want to get steel beadlocks. Sure, sure. You don't want to bang it. Uh, sure. Yeah. Beautiful. So and these zero suspension, other than what you get in these massive tires. Right. So how would you equate that? Say compared to a Rubicon suspension versus your tire suspension, just as far as the way the comfort and travel. So, totally different. Okay, with a, a Rubicon or a side-by-side -side or something like that, mm -hmm. you have the, the, the piston cylinder mm -hmm. and, and you're just going, and if, you know, going up and down and right. whatnot, you still get a lot of vibration, a lot sure. of jarring and whatnot. Uh, if you hit, you know, rocks that are any size, yeah. you're gonna feel it. Sure. And you're gonna, you know, remember that for a while. You know, Typically, if you get on a side by side and you're running down a trail, you're just like, uh, 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 you just shake it. Yep. But if you get on this and you, when you're hitting rocks like this, you might not even know it. Wow. Because it's that smooth. It's just gliding over rocks because everything's getting absorbed by the air sure. into the tire, right? Different, completely different concept. Completely different concept. And it's a really a very different experience. Wow. Um, it, it's kind of shocking how smooth it really is. Right. Uh, I have passengers in the back that. I'll, I'll run over rock that, you know, it's a foot and foot and a half big, and I'll have to stop and say, hey, did you see that rock we just ran over? They have no idea. Wow. And so wow. It, it's kind of fun. So you've taken that on trails here in Colorado? Not in Colorado. I have in Utah and okay. Wyoming. Awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. So then this one and other future ones, are gonna, we're going to start seeing them on trails in Colorado now. I hope so. Right. You I hope, hope so. so, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. You want to show us around back? All right, so now we're on the back side, and this, of course, Closes up, gives you that watertight boat type of yeah. thing with your hull. But we have storage and sleeping here, and if you want to kind of tell us about that, and then also show us where the tell us where the Wabasto heater is. Sure. How do you hide all that? So, real quick before we get into the storage, with the this doesn't have to be folded up to be watertight because the water level is actually going to be down about here. So you got about four to six inches of space before. So you can actually sit out here and do your fishing or diving into the lake crazy. or whatever from right here. It's That's crazy. Here. So storage, we have these uh, these uh, chests that come with it. Right. Uh, they're not standard. These are an add-on. Okay. Um, and so you have additional storage there. Underneath those, if you were to take those out, you have these floor panels that open up, and you have eight inch, about eight inches of storage down here. It goes the full length here. Okay. And then that middle one right here, it drops down about 18 inches. Really? And there's quite okay. a bit of storage down there. That's it, it doesn't go the full length. We have the chain compartments on either side. Sure. But there's quite a bit of storage down there. Okay. And then uh, on the sides here, you have these right here. These are flaps. Like if you wanted to sleep up there, sure. keep it from rolling off. Right. And. Uh, my daughters like to sleep up there frequently. Nice. <laughs> nice. So it'll sleep up to four in here, uh, two on either side, and then you put these together and you can sleep two in the middle. Okay. And then your roll bar, it looks like you have almost that same roll bar set up inside yeah, here. That standard. that is standard. Uh, that roll bar in the middle is standard and comes with it. Um, and then these other ones just add to the rigidity and the strength on the outside if you did roll over. Sure. In the event. Yeah. So the walls are covered with molly, so you can use them to hang, you know, any kind of gear that you might sure. have, ropes, cords, chainsaws, whatever. Right. 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 Um, there's also storage compartments up there. You can see them just above her head. Sure. Uh, there's some there, and then there's a couple up front as well. 
the Webasto heater you asked about, yes, is you can fold that up. Okay. Got a little flap right there. Can you pull that flap right there? Ah, right, perfect. So the bottom part is kind of a thermostat. Mm -hmm. uh, it's you know low to high, but it's kind of like setting your temperature. Sure. You know, I want it 72 degrees or whatever. Right. You, you set it, and it will automatically turn on the heater. Okay. It runs off of diesel fuel, right. and it's nice and toasty. And then where do you vent from? So it vents out on the on the side. Um, also, the knob up there. Before we get away from this part, there's a knob right there on the top of the Webasto heater. Sure. That if I pull that knob out, it'll channel all that heat into the engine compartment to keep the engine nice and toasty, mm. as opposed to the full cap. Okay. And so, like, if you're in the you know really cold winter and you want to keep it uh, warmed at night right. while you're in your house or something mm -hmm. like that, turn that on. You can run it for days. Well, nice. Right, it saves you from having to start it up and warm it up, or right. the whole right. process. Yeah, very nice. Very cool. Very well thought out. Um, so you asked about the, the exhaust. Right. There was a guy right. bumper talk so it just he vents out right here. Yeah. Okay, so the, this knob right here. The Wasasto heater exhaust is on driver's side between the two tires. Yeah, so this is the Wabasto heater. Mm -hmm. This is the exhaust for the engine. Oh, okay, okay, perfect. So, and then when you go to fill up the tires, you, you pull something, it just channels all of that toward whichever tire you want to add air to? Or does no, it they're all, four? all four are connected to the same channel. Okay. So, I'll show you real quick on sure. this set. So, right in here, there's a yellow knob. Yeah. Okay, right. And so, if I want to let air out, I just turn it and it just drops down the air. Crazy. Okay, so basically that just opens up the, the valve, right? right. There's a servo, there's a switch right here that if I, as soon as I open that up, I hit that servo and it'll channel the exhaust into there so it's actually inflating. Wow. And then do you have a pressure gauge? How do you know where you're at? Pressure gauge is right here. Perfect. So this is runoff mercury, so we have a maximum of uh, three PSI. Uh, right now it's sitting at about two PSI. You'd think two PSI, this would be almost on the rims. It, you would think. I guess because these are serious me. sidewalls on these. Well, it's just the air pressure. That's impressive. That's impressive. That's impressive. I mean, I would imagine to get three PSI in here with it's empty, it takes a while because they're enormous. Right. You would think so. But uh, generally, it takes about 30 seconds. That's fast. And it goes pretty fast, yeah. And if you're you know, actually driving across terrain, my, what I've noticed is that it seems to go a lot faster if you're actually going and you're revving the engine. Right, so you can, while you're driving, yeah. fill it up. Yeah. Okay. All right, so somebody wants one of these. What what do they cost? What do, what are we looking at for? Kind of how this one sits right now. So uh, a brand new one is going to run about one hundred twenty thousand. Okay. Um, right now we're running a special where we'll throw in five thousand dollars on you know these upgrades, the ROPS and sure. light bar and stuff like that. Okay. Included into that price. Yeah, we'll we'll okay. just throw that in at no nice. cost, and so I cover that. Okay. Um, we also have a custom trailer that's designed for the Sherp okay. that you just drive right up on and, and uh, drops right in that's sure. centered every time. Um, when you're not driving the Sherp on that trailer, you can take the rails out okay. and you can use it as a normal flatbed trailer to haul your other toys. Nice. Is that included in that price as well? That's not included in that price. That's okay. about 4500 Okay. That's not bad for a trailer designed specifically for this. Yeah. That's not bad at yeah. all. Awesome. So how do we find you? How do people, how do they find you? On so, the uh, reach across here. So, my company is Rough Country Products. Okay. Uh, my name is Dan Packard. You can find us at roughcountryproducts.com. Okay. Roughcountryproducts.com. Roughcountryproducts.com. Okay. And uh, if you're here in the Colorado area, you can talk with b and RV, and they'll get you set up as well. Perfect. All right. Thanks All right. a lot, Dan. Appreciate okay. it, man. Thank that you. thing is it's amazing. It's <laughs> so cool to, to right. kind of climb around one. Thanks a lot. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure.